Hello and welcome to Rise Up Diabetic Health. My name is Alyssa. I have been type one diabetic for almost eight years now. And I recently created this YouTube channel to help give a little more insight into what living with type one diabetes is like, and also to help give you know information on how to improve the quality of your life and improve your diabetes management through developing sustainable habits. So today's topic is something that is super important to me and one of my favorite topics to talk about, and it's movement. Um, I know for myself growing up before I was diagnosed as type one, I loved movement. I played sports, which was like my main love and I moved my body a lot, but it wasn't until I got diabetes eight years ago that I realized what a true impact moving your body has. We technically are our pancreas. So it's up to us to kind of regulate our blood sugars throughout the day by giving ourselves insulin and taking glucose. So when we add working out as an extra variable, it makes things more confusing. And I totally understand the barrier to it because it can feel very frustrating in the beginning when you try to work out and then you end up experiencing an extreme low or you end up being high, you know, a couple hours after. So I kind of made this video to help give you kind of that beginner's guide of how to incorporate exercise and movement into your routine to help leverage your blood sugars and overall improve your quality of life. All right, so I work with a ton of clients, helping them with behavior change. So going from you know zero activity to figuring out how to fit exercise and movement into their life and make it sustainable and enjoyable. So that is going to be the first thing we're gonna talk about is how do you do it? How do you start from scratch and decide what you're going to include into your routine that is going to be beneficial to you? So first thing I would say is you need to know your why. Why do you wanna do this? What benefits is it going to provide for you? If you don't know your why, it's gonna be really hard to consistently show up for yourself if you don't really have a good reason why. So my why definitely has to do with managing diabetes. I have found that incorporating movement every day plays a huge part in my insulin sensitivity and allows me you know, to do the activities that I enjoy. It also allows me to eat the things that I want to eat and be able to still keep my blood sugars in a decent range and live my life. All right, so once you understand your why, it's important to write down some goals for yourself as well. So that could be weight loss, it could be doing 10 push-ups. it could be running two miles. Whatever your goal is, make sure it is something that is important to you and is something you truly care about. Because in the long run, if it's not something you care about doing, you're not gonna wanna continue working towards that goal. Once you have your goal, it's important to set up your routine to be specific to the goal that you have. So for instance, if my goal was to gain muscle, I would not spend all of my time doing cardio. Cardio definitely has benefits, but I know strength training is going to give me the biggest bang for my buck because my goal is to gain muscle. Making sure you're tailoring the type of routine that you are doing to your goals is very important. And we're gonna talk about different types of exercise and how to incorporate that into your routine in just a little bit. Once you nail down that specificity with your goal, and the type of routine you're gonna be doing, it's important to think about sustainability. So it is really easy to get eager in the beginning and tell yourself you're gonna do six workouts a week, and then three weeks later, you find that it's just not sustainable for you and your life. So be realistic with yourself. Ask yourself, how much time do you have every day to commit to working out? Look at your schedule, decide what time of day you'll be working out and add that in your calendar. Ideally in the long run, what we want to achieve is consistency. Consistency is what is going to overall help impact our blood sugars in a positive way. So if you're constantly on this like roller coaster of, you know, working out for a week and then not working out, you're not gonna reap the true benefits of insulin sensitivity. And that's why it's so important to figure out a way to create a sustainable plan. Okay, so I've kind of touched on it already, but the main benefit of being consistent 
with working out and moving your body is insulin sensitivity. Now, why do we care so much about insulin sensitivity? And do you even know what insulin sensitivity is? Because I didn't up until about four years ago and I've been diabetic for eight years. So insulin sensitivity basically comes down to your body's ability to respond to insulin. So the more sensitive we are to insulin, the less we need and the quicker our body will respond when we eat, you know, normal meals or even meals that are like higher in carbs or that can be a little bit of those like trickier meals to nail down. Um, and when you're more insulin resistant, which is kind of on that opposite spectrum, you find it more challenging. Like it just seems like you can't take enough insulin for that meal that you ate. You feel more sluggish. You just feel like your body's just not responding like it should. So when we incorporate these types of movements regularly, it can increase our insulin sensitivity and overall make that diabetes management a little bit easier. Okay, so let's talk about the three main types of exercise. We have aerobic, anaerobic, and then we have more of a mix. So aerobic exercise is usually longer in duration, but lower in intensity. So it means that your heart rates typically will be anywhere from about 90 beats per minute to maybe like 120, 130. So examples of this type of exercise could be going for a walk, long distance running, um, cleaning around your house. It could be gardening. It can go way beyond just exercise. So think of it as like your daily movement. Have you ever found that you tend to go low when you're doing low intensity exercise? It is very common to have a low blood sugar or experience hypoglycemia. The second type of exercise is going to be non-aerobic. Typically is a shorter duration of movement, but a moderate to high intensity. So it is something that is getting your heart rate up, probably closer to that, you know, 140 to 180 range. The type of movement tends to either stabilize the blood sugar or it can cause a rise. So good examples of anaerobic exercise would be strength training, could be boxing, sprinting, doing high intensity interval training, anything that gets that heart rate up and creates that moderate to high intensity. Third and final type of exercise is going to be mixed. So that just means that it's kind of a combination of aerobic and anaerobic. So most common examples of that would be competitive sports or just playing um, sports in general. About a sport like football, there's quick bursts of movement, but then there's also a lot of walking or light jogging. Those types of movements where you're using both aerobic and anaerobic systems. This one's a little bit more tricky because it is more unpredictable and can cause fluctuations of, you know, some lows and some blood sugar rises. Okay, so one nuance that I want to kind of talk about is the idea of workout timing. Something that is super crucial to understand as a diabetic is that there's a fasted state and then there's a non-fasted state. So a fasted state is typically four hours after your meal or it could be overnight. So the reason that we need to like fully understand what this means and the effects that it can have on our body is because when we are in a non-fasted state and we decide to work out, it can make our managing our blood sugars more you know, complicated because we're adding in more variables. So basically that just means that since you, you know, had a meal and took insulin within those last four hours, you have insulin on board that could still be active and working, especially once you get your muscles pumping with exercise that can actually have you know adverse effects to your blood sugars, either causing a low blood sugar or a high blood sugar. So in general, it is recommended to work out fasted because it takes out that variable of having insulin on board. But obviously you can make either work. It's just something to be aware of, especially if you, you know, say you had a meal one or two hours before you started working out that you do need to kind of pay more attention to those blood sugars because they could, you know, all of a sudden decide to drop or rise. Okay, and then another important question is, when shouldn't you work out? 
So that is a tricky one just because everybody's body is different. So I would say in general, even if you're above 200, I wouldn't recommend working out until you're below that number. Focus on taking that correction and then wait till you're back down in range. Best thing you can do for yourself is incorporate that aerobic intensity. So going on a you know 30 minute walk could really help increase that insulin sensitivity and help encourage that blood sugar to you know come back down into range all right now what should we do if our blood sugar is under 70 that's a tricky one because it depends on the type of exercise that you are going to be doing so say i was about to do a strength workout and my blood sugar was at 68 i would probably still continue to do that workout one pay attention to your symptoms if you feel like a low low is coming on then no i would not i would probably take you know some type of glucose wait it out for 30 minutes, see how I feel, and then go from there. But if I'm not really feeling any symptoms and I'm at 68, I'm pretty confident that this strength training that I'm about to do is going to help either stabilize my blood sugar or help it rise just a little bit. So like I said before, strength training is a great mode to like I said before, strength training can tend to cause a rise in blood sugars. So knowing that ahead of time, you know, feeling a little bit more confident that it ultimately gets your blood sugar back up to a normal range. And if I was about to go for a walk and my blood sugar was at 68, I would 100% take some glucose because like I said, low intensity exercise over a longer period of time tends to cause that blood sugar to drop. So the more lower intensity exercise you do, the easier it is for your blood sugar to slowly creep down. Listen to your body, listen to your symptoms, because the more familiar that you become with that, the better you are going to be at, you know, understanding how exercise affects your blood sugars. All right, and then another thing to keep in mind is if you do use a continuous glucose monitoring system, the numbers are typically delayed by 15 to 20 minutes. So that is where I would definitely recommend, especially with exercise, you know, before you do a workout, if you're starting to feel like weird symptoms, um, use a test strip. I think it's a great way to just like confirm where you're at because a lot of times, you know, you could be say sitting at like 110, but you're feeling low symptoms. Use a test strip, see where your blood sugar is actually at in that moment, and then kind of decide what, um, you know, action you're going to take. And then always have glucose on hand. There's going to be some unpredictability with your blood sugars and it is gonna happen at some times. So it's important to you know have your glucose on hand for those emergencies that you do need it. And it's also important to note that when you exceed 90 minutes of low intensity exercise, it actually doubles your risk of hypoglycemia. So super important to be aware of that and that it could be a situation where you would maybe have to take you know some glucose halfway through that workout or whatever you you know happen to be doing all right so that is going to end off the video for today i will be doing another video diving deeper into each specific exercise and how to kind of incorporate that into your routine so stay tuned for that also leave any questions or comments down below and don't forget to like and subscribe so you stay up to date on all new videos that i will be posting thanks for watching